Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I want to talk to you about belt drive systems. Now, I love belt drives on my e-bikes, but there are both pros and cons, so that's what we're going to look at today to see why you might or might not want to use a belt drive system. Now, I've got here my personal e-bike. This is a Priority Current, and it's running a Gates belt drive system. The difference between a belt drive and a chain drive is essentially that you're using a carbon fiber reinforced nylon belt. If you take a look over here, you can see that the belt here is toothed. So it's um, both got these teeth that keep it synchronous and it's got this slot in the middle that keeps it from walking. There are different styles of belt drives and among the Gates line there are different models as well. This is the CDX type, but there are a number of different models. And there are also different companies that make belt drive systems. You can find cheaper e-bikes that use uh, unbranded belt drives. And for me personally, I generally like to stick with Gates. They didn't sponsor this video in any way. They're not paying me to say that. They're just, in my opinion, the top of the line when it comes to these belt drive systems. So now let's talk about the pros of these belt drives. The first thing that I love about these setups is that they are just so low maintenance. You don't need to do anything to them. Unlike a chain that you need to oil, you need to uh, keep it clean, you need to take care of it, occasionally you need to change it, belt drives are basically bulletproof. There's nothing to oil. Really, the only time you need to clean them is if you get some like mud stuck in the teeth of them, if you've been off-roading or something. But even then, that mud's just gonna kind of fall out. But it's good to, to clean that stuff out if you do get them full of like mud and, and rocks and stuff. But otherwise, there's just really no maintenance that you need to do to these things. Also, because you can't use a derailleur with these setups, you're generally going to have a internally geared hub. Here, I've got a Enviolo Nuvinci continuously variable transmission but you could have you know, a Nexus 3-speed, you can have a roll-off, all sorts of different hubs, but basically that's gonna reduce your maintenance load as well. Belt drives also last longer. Some belts can last up to 20,000 miles or 32,000 kilometers, which is crazy when you compare it to chains. I mean, these last can be three, four, five times as long as a chain because it's just not gonna wear out in the same way. So when it comes to longevity and knowing that you're not gonna go through a chain so quickly, belt drives, they're the, they're the top. One thing that I really like about belt drives for commuting purposes as well is that they're just cleaner. Because you don't need to oil them, you never worry about getting oil or grease on your pant leg or on your ankle. I mean, they're just super clean. You can rub your hand over them and it just stays perfectly clean. So they're just nicer, cleaner setups than a sort of rusty or oily chain that's going to stain your clothes. And of course, you're going to find that belt drive systems are a lot quieter. On this bike, it's got a really quiet motor, so I like that I don't hear the chain, I don't hear the gears, I don't hear a derailleur shifting. Everything's just nice and quiet, which for me, that's one of my favorite aspects of e-bikes is that they're just so quiet. When I'm riding, I don't hear anything. I barely hear a motor, and with the belt drive, I don't hear my chain or gears. So that's just a really nice feature for me when I'm choosing a bike with a belt drive setup. If you're not riding an e-bike, you'll probably appreciate that belt drives are lighter than chain drive systems. But for us on e-bikes, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. You know, when you're carrying around a, a six pound battery, saving 100 grams on a chain isn't gonna do much for you. But what you will notice is just how much simpler the system is. You know, there's nothing that you need to change out. There's nothing you need to tune. There's nothing you need to um, clean. There's nothing you need to maintain. It's just a simple belt going around in a circle, no other moving parts. It's just, I mean, the simplicity is, is kind of crazy. For people that are used to really having to work on your bike and keep it in tune, you're gonna love how easy it is to work with a belt drive because there's just, there's nothing to tune. There's, it's just such a simple system. Now that being said, there are some disadvantages to belt drives, you know, it's not all rosy here. Uh, one of the main drawbacks is you just have fewer options for components, especially when you come to uh, drivetrain components like derailers. There are so many options. There's a lot fewer internally geared hubs. So all of your favorite derailers are out. Um, when it comes to changing gear ratios, it's not as easy to just put a bigger chain ring on the front uh, to pull more chain through. Uh, these things are just uh, more limiting with belt drives because of the fewer number of components that are available. There's also the issue of frame compatibility. To actually get a belt into a frame, the frame needs to break somewhere. So on my priority current, back here you can see the frame is actually bolted together. So you need somewhere to slip the belt through because unlike a chain where the chain can come apart and slide through that rear triangle, the belt is one continuous piece. It's, it's never going to break apart like a chain, so you gotta get it in there some way. 
Uh, with full suspension bikes, sometimes you can get away with uh, removing the suspension and you can actually get into the rear triangle through the uh, rear suspension linkage, depending how it's designed. But for a bike that doesn't have rear suspension, the frame needs to break somehow. And speaking of full suspension bikes, there are a number of full suspension bikes that simply are not compatible with belt drives because the chain stay length changes as the suspension travels. And so a full suspension e-bike that uses a belt drive needs to account for that because there's no uh, tensioning going on like you'd have with the derailleur. That doesn't mean you can't have a full suspension belt drive bike, but it needs to be factored in in the design stage, which limits how many are available. And obviously there are a lot of electric motorcycles that use belt drive systems. Uh, the Zero SRF, the Harley-Davidson Livewire, both of which I've personally tested, have both used Gates carbon belt drive systems. You know, it's the same belt I have here. I mean, not the same belt, it's different style, it's bigger, it's stronger, but it's the exact same company's belt. And obviously they have different solutions. Uh, the Zero SRF has the motor coaxially mounted with the um, swing arm so that the chain stay effectively never changes length. Uh, I forget how the live wire does it, if, it, if it's also coaxially mounted, but uh, there are solutions to have rear suspension and belt drive setups. The last disadvantage is just the price. Belt drives are more expensive. This is really cool technology with a lot of advantages, but like we talked about in the beginning of this video, you have to pay for that technology, and it is more expensive than a you know, 100 plus year old chain technology. So you're gonna, you're gonna pay to play with, with belt drives, that's for sure. All right, so there you have it. Those are my favorite pros and cons of belt drive systems, which is right for you. Well, as always, that's a personal choice, but I hope that discussion helped you think about it a little more to decide if a belt drive system is up your alley. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Last but not least, it's time to announce the winner of last week's book giveaway. And the randomly selected commenter is... Like wow. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like and where to send it. You can choose from my books DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, and Electric Motorcycles. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below this video. You can say anything you like, really, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And for anyone who doesn't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.